Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. First update in May 2019. We got some stuff to go through, some beginner stuff, some mobile, an update for Paginated. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Paul Turley's got a blog post and a video for anyone getting started with Power BI. He walks through some of the common misconceptions of actually building out a report, dragging and dropping, slicing and dicing, how to format some things, what a table looks like, dragging fields, really, really basic stuff, but it may help you if you're just beginning with Power BI. So if you are beginning, Check out this blog post and the video and see if it helps you on your way to understand how to use Power BI and create those awesome reports. Prathi Kamsani's got a blog post looking at Power BI mobile reports. There are some limitations if you're doing things in Power BI Desktop for the service versus what's in from a mobile reporting perspective. And she tries to walk through to guide you on creating those so that you're successful with using mobile reportings on your phone. She goes all the way through looking at it inside of Power BI Desktop for the full report, and then all the way to the mobile device using the mobile views inside of Power BI Desktop. It's a great blog, take a look at it if you are trying to create mobile reports for the mobile app on your devices. Matt Allington's got a blog post looking at how to actually group data without using DAX. Grouping items with inside of DAX can absolutely be done, but sometimes, uh, you know, DAX may be a little scary and you don't wanna go down that road. And so Matt actually walks you through how you can actually do grouping inside of Power BI Desktop. So this is a feature that's been there for a little while, but you can actually group certain items and create what those top level groups are, and then the sub items underneath it, and then that will be honored in visuals inside of Power BI Desktop. You can also do this with what's referred to as binning. And so the example that Matt uses in his blog post is age, and you can have that into kind of sections of age. So like one through 10, 10 or 11 through 20, so on and so forth. So you can bin those into specific groups. It's a very cool feature inside of Power BI Desktop. I actually haven't heard about it in a while. I, I haven't heard of people using it. So I'm really happy that Matt did a blog post on this to kind of bring it front and center. If this is something you're interested in, check out the blog post links as always down in the description below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. We got an update for Paginated Reports, and as Chris Finland points out, this is the fifth update or fifth week in a row that there's been an update. So that, that team's been cranking out items and it's really awesome to see. So in this update, there were actually two items. The first is that Oracle and Teradata data sources are now supported in the Power BI service, so you can publish your paginated report into your premium workspace. And if you're using Oracle or Teradata, those will work. They do require a gateway, so make sure that you set that up in order for it to actually connect properly and refresh. The other update was regards to email subscriptions and the fact that you can do hourly updates now. So effectively, you could get email subscription updates to your email inbox every 15 minutes. Chris does call out that currently today, this is just for paginated reports, but they are working to enable this for other items. So stay tuned on that. Really cool updates, excited to see the continued amount of updates that are coming out from this team. Casper de Jong's got a blog post highlighting some of the community activities that he and a few other folks from Microsoft participated in. This is through a program called My Skills for Africa on the Microsoft side. And this was in conjunction with the Elizabeth Glazier Pediatric AIDS Foundation, where they worked to get people over to Africa to help learn Power BI so that they could develop reports to track the information that they're working on with regards to AIDS in specific countries in Africa. The folks involved here on the Microsoft side were Casper de Jong, Maggie Sparkman, and Patrick LeBlanc. They went to separate countries and just worked for a week with a bunch of different folks getting them up to speed on how to use Power BI so that they can report on this information and gain insights to help with the spread of AIDS in Africa and reduce that and identify folks that may be at risk 
to just help the process of what they're doing. Definitely check out this blog post just to see the highlights that they did in their efforts, which were like a week long of training with folks in Africa and just the experiences that they had and what they're trying to accomplish, which is really the most important part. Awesome to see this community engagement. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What did you see this last week? What was your most favorite item? Let me know, maybe it was something I talked about, maybe it was something I didn't. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.